the lights so we love the Lord. Appreciate the youth singing this morning. That musician does a wonderful job. I'm so thankful that he knows where the pieces go. Yeah. I'm thankful for that. Eric, I'm thankful it didn't look like it was going to be a pretty puzzle, but it's going to put back together real nicely. That's, right. That's what I think about when he sings that song. He was singing it long before he ever went the road he went, but who would have thought you'd be know that you would never thought that'd be your testimony song? You never dreamed it'd been that way. I never dreamed some things would happen that way. And but the one of the matter is when you put a puzzle together, you don't know where every piece goes. That's right. But the man that made the puzzle, he can do it with his eyes closed. He can do it with his hand tied behind his back. He can, he knows every inch of that puzzle. And I'm so glad that he knows Amen. where my pieces go. And the times I've tried to make things fit and didn't want to go, Amen. he said, that don't go there. Let's put this here. And he knows exactly what your life is supposed to be like. That's right. I'm just happy to be here this morning. <laughs> But I love the Lord. This is Brother Joe Reed. He's going to come around for each horse. Pray for him. Uh, ages 5 and under. If you want to go with Miss Amanda Scott, there she is in the back. 5 and under. If you want to stay in here, that's fine too. He'll do good. Love you, brother. Appreciate you. Pray for you. Pray for the preacher. Amen. All right. It's good to be here. Enjoy that singing. They're 5 and under and they want to stay. It won't bother me. I got 5. Amen. <laughs> I do want to say I'm thankful for the privilege and the honor to be able to stand in the pulpit today. Um, <coughs> Uncle Scott and Eric told me that I, since I was preaching tonight, also I had to do a two-part sermon and cut it short for y'all since Brother Frankie wasn't here. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't y'all were saying all right. <laughs> I don't think I'm as long-winded as Frankie. Uh, but I'll try my best to do that. I'm going to do that that God would have me to do. Okay? But um, I was telling Scott and Eric a while ago, uh, I found out that I'm as not as young as I used to be yesterday, and I'm not as used to manual labor as I used to be. I took a job in October. I changed jobs. I got tired of traveling, being on the road all the time. And I took a job, I, and all I do now is I drive a low boy for a big construction company. I drive up and down the road all day long. I load equipment up, unload it. My heaviest thing I pick up every day is a uh, chain binder to bind down the equipment. I mean, I'm good. Uh, a friend of mine, Chad, they said, uh, would you like to make some extra money? I said, yeah. Who wouldn't? I got five kids to feed. <laughs> so, girl said, you build a fence for me, I'll pay you. I'm like, what kind of fence is it? She said, just one of them lightweight vinyl privacy fences. Six foot tall privacy fence. I'm like, that's easy. <laughs> she didn't tell me I was having to dig through a forest of bamboo. <laughs> if you ain't never dug up bamboo, it's hard, but <laughs> Especially with post hole diggers and shovels. I broke a pair of post oak diggers yesterday. Almost broke a shovel. Went to Lowe's, bought me another pair of post oak diggers and a shovel, a good shovel, had a good point on it. Brought it back and Josh broke my new shovel. <laughs> 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 I'm like, man. But I do want to say to the to the youth choir, did an amazing job singing. Uh, just continue to let God lead you in yes, everything sir. that you do. Yes, sir. You got your Bibles, turn with us to Mark chapter number 10. Mark chapter number 10. And uh, it's a very familiar scripture. Keep your Bibles with us and find your place also to John chapter number 11. I'm going to read two different places. And my prayer is this morning that I just want to be a help to somebody. We've got it out of the way this morning. Brother Zach already announced my name. If you miss my name, my name is Joe Reed. That's not important though. If you leave here today and you go home and you sit down and around the dinner table or you go to the restaurant to eat and you say, what was that guy's name that preached this morning? It ain't going to matter a hill of beans if you don't remember my name. Okay, But if you leave outside of those swinging double doors right there or outside of these doors right here and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, you missed it all, friend. I mean, hey, I'm not, hey, if you never remember my name, it'll be all right. It's, 
hey, you, you'll be able to go through life and it won't, it won't affect you none, okay? I mean, hey, you'll be able to say, all right, well, that old oh, so-and-so, you know, if you got to have five kids, you know, yeah, that's me, all right? I don't have as many as Brother Carl Partain. I don't want that many either, amen? God bless him. I pray for him every day, every time I go to the grocery store. But anyways, uh, we, I, I'm thankful for what God can do for us more so for what He can do for us. Brother Zach, I'm already thankful for what He's already done for me. Yes, sir. All of my sins He done away with. And every time that I needed Him, I called on Him, and He's been there to answer my prayers. Now I'm going to say this, you may be praying for something, and you may say, well, preacher, He hasn't answered my prayers. Hold on. Because He will answer. And sometimes He's already answered. We just don't like His answer. Okay? Yeah. I'll say this and then I'm going to read. Remember one time when I was a lot younger, me and Phil, my brother, uh, some of you know him, a lot of you know him, and, and we, want, we want to buy us a boat. So we're going to buy us a boat together. And I went to buy me a boat. Me and Phil was going to buy a boat together. We was going to share it. And Brother Jimmy, he, uh, we, the guy said, uh, well, I tried a couple finance companies and nobody will finance y'all right now. I mean, we had perfect credit at the time. No kids, you know, we was doing good. And uh, we had perfect credit. And the guy said, I tried all the way from here to California to get y'all approved. And I can't get y'all approved. I don't understand it. I said, I do. Evidently, God knew that boat would come in between me and him. He answered my prayer, but not the way I wanted it. I wanted a nice sea ray bass fish ski combination boat to be streaking across Lake Oconee. That's what I wanted. I prayed for it, okay? But anyways, a uh, very familiar passage. I'm not going to read the whole passage here on this, uh, starting in verse number 46. We have the account of when Jesus uh, is coming out of, he's came into Jericho, now he's coming out of Jericho with his disciples. We have the record. We all have heard this many, many, many times of the story of blind Barnabas. Blind Barnabas is sitting there by the wayside. He's begging. And he hears a commotion. He hears a commotion. And he asks somebody, he said, what is all of the commotion? Evidently, he was asking, what is all this about? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth is come. Jesus is come. And then I want to pick up, and he, we know the story how they told him to be quiet. And then I want to read verse number 48. It says, And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He didn't care who heard him. He didn't care who's seen him. He just needed some help. He had already, I believe, old blind Barnabas had heard the story how he had healed everybody else, how he had touched everybody else. And he said, now's my time, okay? I mean, hey, but he said, but in verse 49, it said, and Jesus stood still and commanded he to be and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man and saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth for thee. Now flip your Bibles over to John chapter number 11. We know the account of this. This is where Lazarus is dead. And Jesus, he heard about his friend sick. And uh, he, he tarried over there in Bethany doing the, that that God would have him to do. He stayed there. And the thing is, and then here he comes into Bethany and Lazarus has already died. Here comes Martha running up to him, jumps in his face and says, had you been here, my brother wouldn't have died. He said, he'll live again. She said, I know he will in the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. Hey, I don't, that's a totally different message. I'll get that, that ain't what God put on my heart. But he said, that I am the resurrection. He said, he'll, he'll live again. But then he... Martha told him, Martha said, she said, Yea, Lord, in verse 27. Let me, let me tell you where I'm reading that. Verse 27, she said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art Christ and the Son of God, which has come to the world. 
And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come, and he calleth for thee. I want to preach a little bit on he calleth for thee. Maybe, uh, hey, maybe you're in the condition this morning. Hey, you know the thing is, everybody in here at one point in time was lost. Or you are still lost today. You're in one or two. I am a saved sinner, okay? You're either, you're either saved by the grace of God and you were lost, or you are still lost and you have not yet realized that you're lost, or you have realized you're lost and you just don't want to pay attention to it. You're either, you're either turning away, but I, I mean, hey, I don't believe nobody had to tell blind Barnabas, you're blind. That's right. Nobody had to tell him that. Nobody had to, I mean, hey, nobody had to say, Barnabas, we got some bad news for you, bud. Uh, we just want to share something with you. Don't know if you know it yet. Son, you're blind. Really? You know that. I mean, it's a good evidence, Mama. I can't see you. Dad, I can't see you. I mean, hey, I, I, I don't know what Mama and Daddy looks like. I mean, hey, but blind Barnabas, hey, he realized, hey, I am tired of sitting in this condition. I am tired of being in this condition. I'm tired of sitting by the wayside begging for somebody to help me. I'm tired of doing this. I've heard of what Jesus has done. I've heard how he's touched everybody else. Hey, let me tell you this. Hey, it's fine for me and Daddy. I love getting on Facebook and seeing everybody's praise reports. I'll say again, your praise report. I don't care to see your drama. I don't care to see right. your family, your mad at your friend, mad at your mom and your daddy. It don't really bother me. Hey, but I sure love to get on Facebook and see a lot of y'all praise. okay? How God blessed you. How God touched your friend. Hey, but you know what means more to me when I can see that he done it for me, friend? I mean, hey, oh, Black Barnes done said, hey, I done heard else and I want him to touch me for a little bit friend hey I want him to touch me I hey but blind barn was sitting there and he said when everybody else said just be quiet hush blind barn was said uh uh I ain't missing my chance man he started hollering and it was a great commotion it was, I mean, hey, here he come. And it was a great commotion. He started hollering, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Said all of a sudden, Jesus stood still. He stood. He said, it, Mark says he stood. Luke says he stood still and commanded for him to call him. Hey, in, in, in the book of Mark, Mark gives the record of blind Barnabas, and we see his faith before he ever was touched. Before he ever got there, we see his faith. Now, blind Barnabas, now, just teach you a little something. Blind Barnabas, and back in those days, Everybody wore a a virgin woman wore garments that, that everybody when when she walked through the town everybody identified that young lady right there is pure. Hey, when a widow woman walked down the road that had had lost her husband, she had certain things on her garment that identified, friend, that she was a widow. Hey, and then hey, and if you and when you was a blind man, people could tell by the garments that you wore that you was a blind man, friend. Hey, the blind partners was over there and they said. Hey, Barnabas! He said, yeah. He said, stand up. Be of good comfort. He calleth for thee. So what did blind Barnabas do? He said he casted his garments away. He identified, friend, I might be blind, but I ain't going to be blind no more, friend. I ain't going to be in this situation. And he ran up to Jesus. And Jesus said, hey, what will thou have me to do? He said, that I might receive my sight. That I might receive my sight. That's all he wanted. He didn't, hey, he didn't, he didn't ask for something else, but he had faith in the master that the master could touch him. He said, I want to receive my sight. I want to be able to see just like everybody else. Yeah. Hey, but I want to identify something to you. He already seen what a lot of people hadn't seen. He had faith yeah. in the one in right. the, he was talking with. Amen. Now, Jesus told him, he said, what will he, he asked him, he said, what would thou have me to do, should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. He didn't leave nothing undone with him, friend. He, everything that he done, he made him 
completely whole. He didn't, I mean, hey, I believe the, the master might be calling you out here this morning. Hey, the master might be knocking on your door this morning. And hey, and I'm going to touch three different things of why the master might be calling. First off, the master may be calling you this morning for a physical need. He might be calling you to help you with a physical need. He helped blind barbers with a physical need. I mean, hey, there we know, hey, he identified the Messiah. So therefore, the Lord was calling him and helped him on a spiritual need. He helped him on a spiritual need. Hey, friend, blind Barnabas identified. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. He said, excuse me, let me back up. He said, Jesus of Nazareth. There was nothing significant about Nazareth. The only thing ever good that ever came out of Nazareth was Jesus. I mean, hey, that's the only thing it's known for. I mean, hey, it's a one-hit wonder, but what a wonder it is, okay? I mean, man, I mean, hey, you got some groups that's a one-hit wonder. They got one song, it hit to the top of the chart, and they go out, and you'll never hear them no more. Hey, Jesus was a uh, Nazareth had a one-hit wonder, but wow, what a hit wonder it was. People remember it for ages to come. But here it is. He identified that he was the Messiah. He said, Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David. He identified, friend, that he was the master. And he realized, hey, if I'm going to get help, he got more than he came for. He left there whole. He didn't leave there half undone. Okay, he, you know what? He could have got his eyesight healed. If he's still down and going to hell. What does it matter? What does it matter? Jesus touched him because he's seen the faith that that young man had. He's seen the faith that he had. Not only, and I told you it may not be long this morning, not because Brother Scott paid me or nothing, okay? <laughs> but Jesus, we read, we have the account in John chapter number 11. One of Jesus' best friends, Lazarus, has died. They send word to him. He's over in another town. They send word to him and says, Hey, your friend Lazarus, he's sick. He said, Okay. And he stayed there. And he said, uh, He told his disciples, this, this sickness is not unto death. He only sleeps. They said, Well, if he's sleeping, why are we going there? Why are we staying here? We got to go. We need to go over, boys. He gets there. Here comes Martha running up to him. Gets in his face and says, had you been here, he wouldn't have died. You know what? She was absolutely right in what she said. She was absolutely right. Do you understand that Jesus, you, we ought to thank God that Jesus now is sitting at the right hand of the Father. We ought to thank God that He sent the Comforter down here. Yes, we ought to thank God that He sent the Holy Ghost down here because you know why? In that point in time, this is a good evidence of how limited man is. Jesus was over here and He's preaching to these people. He's helping these people in this town. And He hear, friend, that His friend down the road, He was limited physically. Hey, but friend, now that He's in heaven, He ain't no longer limited, friend. I'm thankful, 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 friend. thankful for that. I'm thankful. I don't know about y'all, but it does me good. Hey, then all of a sudden, Jesus notices something. As Martha's in his face telling him where he should have been, he notices something. He says something's missing. Now, we don't, he didn't actually say that, but Jesus looked around. Somebody was missing and something was missing. Just a little Bible study for you next week. Go look every time you read about Mary, what's she doing? Hey, the first time you read about Mary, she's, hey, she's washing his feet. Every time you read about Mary, you see Jesus and Mary together, 
She's at his feet. Yeah. I believe Jesus showed up and she was in there and Mark was saying, yeah. He's like, but hey, I want to show you something about what was said though. We all get on the, we, we, hey, we need to understand how we say things and the attitude in how we say things and what we say. He looked around and he said, wait a minute, there's somebody missing. I don't feel tears dripping on my feet. I don't feel the presence of somebody hugging on my feet and thanking me. Uh, somebody's missing here. Yeah, Look at Martha and he said, where's Mary? We don't have record of that, but didn't he ask her that? Oh, she said, okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> you don't want to talk to me. <laughs> Get to Mary and she said, hey, Mary, yes. I'm not, I won't want, want deal with it right now, Martha. I don't want to clean the house right now, Martha. I don't want to clean the house. I just know this, Martha. Had the Master been here, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. He said, He's come. And He's calling for you. She didn't ask nobody, what should I do? Hey, is it alright? Should I go over there? She just... In haste, got up and ran. And all the Jews that was with her, they're the mourners, the fake mourners. They said, oh, she's going down to the grave. And when she went down there, she seen where Jesus sat. She just stood up to his feet and just sat there. Just sat there at his feet. She sat there. She, and she said, Lord, have you been here? My brother wanted to die. But it was in the attitude behind the deliverer. That's right. Me and you sometimes, we want to get up in his face. It might be good just to get on the feet. Get at his feet for a little bit. Yeah, just rest at his feet and let God tell us what he wants. Let's see. Let's see, the thing is, I believe, lastly, my last little point, I believe it might help somebody out. Jesus came. Not only was he calling somebody to help them physically, not only was he calling to help somebody spiritually, but he came calling for Mary to help her emotionally. We have record. And it's Mary hit the ground. There at Jesus' feet. He looked at her. Tears streaming out her face that of her brother. I know the pain and I know the hurt of losing a sibling. <clears throat> One of the hardest things I've ever went through in my life. 2001, when I laid my sister to rest. One of the hardest things I've ever in my life. If I never have to experience that type of pain again, it was fine. Yeah. It was fine. But he looked, see the tears streaming down her face. He looked over there at those other Jews that knew Lazarus, tears streaming in their face. He had compassion. He showed compassion. Jesus wept. He said, I got this son here. He said, Lord, he said, Father, I want to ask you this, not for my sake, but for theirs. Well, I know you hear me always, but I'm saying this for them. He came to touch Mary emotionally. I believe one of the biggest things that we battle with in our Christian life is our emotions gets the best of us. We go through heartaches. We go through troubles. We go through trials. Last time I was here, sat right there with Zach sitting at, Brother Frankie preached on being stuck. And I believe. I, that, stuck, that, that message has stuck with me. <laughs> but I'm thankful that when I feel stuck, I feel like, Lord, I don't know which way to turn. Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, I don't know what move to make. The emotions come rolling in like a waterfall. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I believe the masters come in this morning. I can feel them in the song service. I had myself a pretty good time preaching. I can feel it. The Master's here this morning and He's come calling on you. Why well, is Brother Glenn or someone to come around and get a song? Whatever you feel led to sing.
just want to ask you to help. Let this, this, this morning, the Master's call. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you'll open it up, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. You with me. It don't matter. Hey, it don't matter what you've done in the past. Where you've been, He don't care. We have evidence of that. Oh, Zacchaeus was a publican. He was the IRS. Nobody liked him. Come to town, and Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. This day, I'm going to your house. I'm glad, no matter what I've done in my life, He forgave me, and He's here to help me. If you're going through emotional pain right now, the Master's come, and He's called. It ain't coincidence that the message hits you in your heart. It ain't coincidence that you was here this morning. It ain't coincidence that I was the one delivering the message. God ordained it all. Question is, are you willing to get at His feet? Are you willing to spite what everybody else may think about you? Blind Barmist could care less what everybody in the crowd thought about him. He just decided, I ain't going to be blind no more. I hope and pray this morning that the blinders was dropped from your eyes and you realize you're lost. You don't have Jesus in your personal Savior. While we stand and we sing. Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.